Coming up, danger in the water. Sharks in our area are shutting down beaches where swimmers are being told to hit the sand. Extreme heat continues. Just how hot it'll feel this week. And it's a taste of the Middle East at a new Chelsea hotspot. New York Live's here with how Shuket is serving up something special and changing the dynamic between chefs and diners. Hey, what's up, friends? Welcome back. This is News for Now for July 20th. I'm Kay Ingram. All right, y'all, we got to talk about my personal nightmare, sharks, because their feeding frenzy off the New York coast is pushing swimmers out of the water and onto the sand. Those areas included the Rockaways and Jones Beach on Long Island Tuesday. Red flag warnings were up after sharks were spotted in the water. No one was attacked in any of the sightings, luckily, but lifeguards and surfers who saw them say that the sharks were a little too close. I saw the mouth come up to a little, just a little, and then it just like went under the wave and swam out. It was big, it was dark. Um, it's something you want to like be aware of when you're going to the beach. I saw it, it was popping its head up. I yelled to him, you got to get out of the water. Now, in an effort to help, park police were on patrol encouraging swimmers to stay on the beach. Shore towns are bracing for big crowds because of that heat. Now they're urging people to listen to lifeguards and take precautions. All right, now up next, we've got shocking new details in the shooting death of a crew member on the TV set of Law & Order Organized Crime. Several law enforcement officials say that police believe he had been dealing marijuana out of his car. 31-year-old Johnny Pizarro was shot while reserving parking spots for the television shoot in Greenpoint Tuesday morning. Police say he was sitting in a car on North Henry Street when someone opened the door and shot him in the head. Law enforcement sources say that police recovered marijuana from a cooler in the trunk of the car and that Pizarro may have posted online where he was at the time. Police are looking into whether he was targeted or if it was some kind of drug related robbery attempt. Now on to a stunning crime on the Upper East Side. Police are investigating an apparent murder-suicide involving the wife and son of a retired Manhattan Supreme Court judge. Police say that Doug Solomon bludgeoned his 65-year-old mother, Diane, inside of their apartment. The 26-year-old then jumped to his death from the East 79th Street building around 10.30 Tuesday morning. His father, Charles Solomon, told detectives that they were both sleeping when he left for work, but noted he had a conversation with his wife the night before about their son's future. Now, according to Charles Solomon, his son had dropped out of college, quit sports, and was heavy into drugs and alcohol. Up next, former New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio is ending his run for Congress. Yep, he's bowing out of the race for New York's newly reconfigured 10th District. The move comes less than two months after de Blasio announced his candidacy. Trailing in recent polls, the two-time mayor and brief one-time candidate for president, if you remember, called it quits in a crowded race. He didn't give details on his future plans. Hey, I'm Storm Team 4 meteorologist Matt Brickman. The heat is the story, and it should be. After what has already been a hot month, it's about to get even hotter. Yesterday was our fifth day in the 90s this month. That passed last year's total, and we're basically too average, but we are going to soar beyond that with the stretch of heat out ahead of us. So I want to make us try to feel a little bit better. Put this into context. It's not as hot as it's ever been back in 1993 this extreme heat wave we had three days in a row over a hundred degrees i don't think we get to 100 at any point in this stretch in new york city at least and then go back to 1948 Similar deal, this time in August, three in a row over 100. Now, I do think it'll feel over 100 degrees over the next couple of days with highs in the mid-90s and high humidity as well. But at least it's not the hottest stretch ever in New York City's history. All right, are you looking for a spot to stay cool and get a good meal too? Yes, I know the answer is yes. So New York Live is checking out a popular Middle Eastern restaurant in Chelsea that's known for its authentic and delicious eats. Check it out. 
Chouquette has been serving up some of the best Mediterranean food in town for almost a year now on the corner of 9th Avenue and 24th Street. Today, we're taking you inside. Aisha, it's great to see you. Yes, you as well. Welcome. Thank you. I am very excited to be here today. I mean, we know we've seen you at Shuka, and now we're here. It's been almost a year that you've been open. Tell me all about Shuket. I wanted to really create something that blurred the lines between the front and the back of the house. For so many years, you're cooking, and your dish goes right out the door, and you have no idea who you're cooking for and what their reaction is. You know, every now and then someone comes back and says, oh, chef, they loved it. But you really kind of want to see it. And I think it changes the dynamic of dining for me and working. So it's been, a, it's been an amazing experience thus far. Now this is how you do it. <laughs> Chef, tell me about what you brought out. To start with the rip and dip moment. So I'm gonna pass you rip some dip. tips. <laughs> if you wanna get some bread going, you're a pro. Mm -hmm. For the dips, we have your not so average hummus because it's silky smooth and nobody gets it like that. And then my favorite is the lebne with the saffron soaked apricots with lime and herfa pepper. Definitely not your average hummus. That is really good. This is the popular's favorite, I would say, is the fish in the cage, which is the whole boned out corgi that has a harissa sauce with green charmoula and then grilled broccolini and fennel. This to me is always the best part, right behind the head. How do you do it? I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> to be honest with you, for the first time in a long time, it doesn't feel like work. So in that, when you feel good, you want to create beautiful things. And, and in this space is, has really helped do well, that. an amazing job. I'm a huge fan of yours, so thank you for having us today. Oh, my pleasure. Cheers. Cheers. And this next one is video that has sparked a lot of anger. A Brooklyn mother calling out Sesame Place after she says a character there intentionally ignored her daughter and niece because they're black. NBC Philadelphia's Johnny Archer spoke with the family's lawyer about what exactly went down. A Brooklyn family visiting Sesame Place in Langhorne in outrage over what happened in this now viral video. Of course, the, the character interacts with several other families um, that are of the Caucasian descent, as we believe. Um, and when it comes to them, what we see is that the character actually goes around those girls. It, it, you know, the, the character changes direction to some degree um, so as to avoid um, my clients. An attorney representing the family of the two six-year-old cousins says the little girls were devastated by what happened Saturday afternoon. The mom of one of the girls posting this video to social media. What happens next was not caught on video. is almost um, equally disturbing. Um, what happens is that that same character then again interacts with another Caucasian child immediately after the video shuts off. Sesame Place posting a statement Sunday in part saying the Rosita character has confirmed that the no hand gesture seen several times in the video was not directed to any specific person. Rather, it was a response to multiple requests from someone in the crowd who asked Rosita to hold their child for a photo which is not permitted. Then on Monday, the park released another statement in part saying, we are committed to making this right. We will conduct training for employees so they better understand, recognize and deliver an inclusive, equitable and entertaining experience to our guests. We never bought the, the, the story that was told by Sesame Place. I mean, and I don't think the world bought that explanation either. So it was not surprising to see substantial other videos flourish um, to substantiate um, the allegations that's made in this case. Since the video went viral, a number of other videos surfaced of people complaining about similar experiences at Sesame Place, including this video that apparently shows a character softly slapping a 10-year-old African-American girl in the face in 2019. This is something that we don't take lightly. Uh, we are not happy. Uh, we believe that the two statements that the company has put out directly contradicts itself as far as their posture. We did reach out to Sesame Place for comment, but they have not responded yet. But the attorney tells me that Sesame Place has reached out to them. They just haven't talked yet. As for filing a lawsuit, the attorney tells me that all options are on the table. In Langhorne, Pennsylvania, Johnny Archer, NBC News. Hi, friends. That's all I've got for you for today's show. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget, we'll be right back here for you tomorrow on News for Now. See ya.